everybody ready. Thank you for joining us on today's peer-to-peer -to -peer training for Agent Tarot. I'm Stacy King, and I'm also joined today by Cliven Stellani, who is our ADM for Agent Tarot. Welcome, Cliven. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. He'll be here to answer any questions that you might have about Agent Tarot or our platform, of course, but that's not what this training is intended for. This training is intended for you guys to learn as much as you can from our wonderful, wonderful speaker and uh, trainer. And uh, again, I'll give it uh, just one more second, but a quick reminder, if you have any questions, if you have those, put them in the Q&A and we will monitor those as we go. And um, even though everybody's on mute, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. We will also be recording this and we'll put this out on demand after the fact. So you'll be able to go back and see what you might have missed. Our wonderful trainer today is Heath Sheeran. Heath is a coach and consultant for insurance professionals, helping them to reach their fullest potential and find their own voice. Heath loves working with people and telling their stories through his personal podcast, Insurance Town, where he hosts, and his consulting position at agency Performance Partners. People are Heath's biggest passion, and speaking on stage and being on the microphone brings him immense joy. You'll learn that quickly from his personality. Please welcome the mayor of insurance and the light to the insurance industry, my good friend, Heath Sheeran. Hey, hey, that's exciting. Thank you for that. Um, so, uh, no, I do, I do love people, and it's my passion, and I love working with agencies. I've been doing it for 20 years plus, and it's, it's a, definitely a passion of mine. Um, would you like me to share screen now? Is that okay? Yes, go okay, for it. You're, you're good. You're the Excellent. star now. Okay, good. Um, I, I was running out of breath because I had to sprint to the bathroom and back. Uh, I made her sweat a little bit because I was running a little bit behind, um, but you could see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Good. And I used the agent. It took me a minute to figure it out, but I used the wonderful agent hero uh, background there. So I love it. Um, so I'm proud. Uh, Good branding. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll do it quickly because you already did a great job on this, but just a little bit about me for those that are on and are wondering who is this guy. I am a second generation insurance professional and I, I love this business. I tried to get out of it. And I tried to go different routes, but uh, my father brought me back in. And as you'll see here in a few minutes, I even married a second generation insurance professional. So um, I'm a sucker uh, and, I, and I love this industry. I'm focused on helping as many people as I can. As she mentioned, I love people. I've had you know, half my career in the carrier side and half my career as an agency owner or consultant uh, or salesperson of some sort. So um, I want to use both those experiences to help you as much as I can. Um, our goal uh, at AVP is to help these people as much as we can. And one big thing for me, and I think it's big for, for you guys listening, is I'm a huge believer in strong work ethic, uh, having a can-do attitude. And the relationship will always be important in our industry. I, I talk to my kids about this all the time. You know, we don't quit. We don't give up. You know, we try to do everything we can to our best. And that goes for the insurance industry as well. Um, a few quick things about me. I do live in uh, Maumelle, Arkansas, which is right outside Little Rock. Uh, those that don't know uh, where that is. My nickname is The Mayor uh, because of the podcast and because um, I just developed that nickname about 20 years ago, it feels like, because I knew everybody in the room I walked into. Um, I have a beautiful bride named Stacy, also second generation. Three pretty awesome kids, um, eight. Uh, this should be actually nine, 12, and 14. I haven't updated this in a while. Um, I'm a passionate uh, Razorbacks fan, so if you're not, I'm sorry. Um, but I do love me some uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. I love to cook. I love to bake. I love to grill, all of those things. And my my guilty pleasure is reality TV. So all of y'all out there looking at me and thinking I'm crazy, I, I do. I can't help it. Uh, my wife and I got caught one day in a three-hour reality show i think it was like real housewives of atlanta or something and we just couldn't stop watching and now i just i'm hooked on any kind of trashy reality tv i could find um i do have a big passion for people and i have a podcast so enough about me let's dive in for a minute so what we're going to talk about today is how to make that phone ring um and so i do want to get into some of that but before i do one of the big things i want to get into it i had a great conversation um 
with you know some folks from Agentero through this, and I think this is going to play right into some of the things that you guys have access to with the Opportunities Engine and with some of the cool technology that Agentero has right there at your fingertips. Uh, first thing, you know, what I talk to people about all day, as I've had back to backs all day today, even about this is. You got to start off, first of all, figuring out who your ideal client is. Um, and, you know, when you're doing that, figure out what's important to them, you know, figure out what are their pain points, you know, get into why are they shopping? What about them is appealing to you? Uh, and, you know, why are they your ideal, your ideal client? And so I think wrestling with that sometimes, you know, for the agents I deal with, sometimes can be tough to figure out why do I want to write this client? Why are they important to me? And I think that that's going to be a huge part before you can get into marketing, before you get into making the phone ring, you have to figure out, in my opinion, who is that ideal client of yours? And so I think you have to figure out in order to get into that is what do you specifically provide that can help them? And most of you, if you're an agent, tarot agent, you're probably very uh, tech savvy. You're probably very forward thinking. You're probably working with a lot of carriers that can have a lot of speed and efficiency, if I'm not you know, mistaken. Most of the carriers you guys are writing with are some of those that, you know, you could just type in two pieces of information, get a quote. You know, you talk about speed and efficiency. It's ridiculous what you can do with some of the technology. When I was an agency owner, we didn't have the open leads and the branch and some of those carriers out there. We didn't have some of that. So you guys already have a huge advantage on some of that to be able to offer that speed and efficiency. And then, you know, how does what you provide help those that you serve? And so again, going back to that speed and efficiency and having that opportunities engine and having the, the information on your, da your dashboards and having that speed and quickness, you can be able to offer like referral partners, you know, mortgage brokers, lenders, uh, real estate agents, whatever, be able to say, hey, I can quote your people pretty quick, get them at their DTI quickly, or I can help them with this or that. So um, before we can get set up and help get the phone to ring, let's figure out, you know, who that ideal client is. And so as we dive into some of this even more, and now you're thinking, get to the meat, Heath. Well, we're getting there. I want to get you set up first, and let me set the table first. So let's talk about who is the ideal client um, and who is not. So, you know, I ask people all the time, you know, who is your ideal client? And one of them came back to me a couple of weeks ago, and this made perfect sense to me. So this might be something that uh, relates to you as well. My ideal client is 25 to 35 years of age. Works a full nine to five job, you know, has a family with two kids, has a secondary home, two or more cars, and loves to smoke cigars. Something like thinking, what does that have to do with anything? Why does it matter if they like to smoke cigars? Well, you know, some of the analytics and stuff out there, and some of the stuff you can get from Agent Terrell may show you that somebody likes to smoke cigars is a little risk adverse, or they don't care about this or that. You know, why does it matter if they have a secondary home? Because usually that means money. You know, usually it means maybe it's a lake house, maybe it's a you know, a, a beach property, maybe they got a boat, maybe they got some other things. So I would love to see, I don't know how many people we have on here, but if y'all could put in the chat or whatever, a question, answer, whatever it is to say, I know what my ideal client is, or, you know, maybe give me some examples of what your ideal client is. I would love to hear some of that. It's hard for me not being able to see you guys. I would love some sort of interaction. So if Stacy or how do you, Clivens, am I saying that I'm right? Watching. Yeah, you said yeah. perfect. <laughs> Dang, Yes. Okay, and the commercial side of that, my ideal client's a general contractor with several crews, five or more subs, and they have audit issues. Again, why Heath? Why does that matter? Well, because they got several crews. Obviously, they're going to have more autos. Uh, obviously, they're going to have, you know, workers comp. They're going to have this or that. If they've got uh, subs, then you're going to have opportunities to write their subs. You know, if they've got audit issues, then there's a pain point. Um, there's some issues there. So we want to get into some of that too. So um, that's why I put that in there. Have we had anybody respond on that, Stacy? Or is anybody listening to me? Or am I just talking to dead air here? I'm just kidding. They they have not responded, okay, but cool. that's not unusual. We usually have I, a really quiet audience. I hear you. <laughs> I was a pastor for seven years, so I'm used to having some interaction and some hallelujahs and raise your hands and throw stuff on stage, whatever. So um, I would love to have you interact with me any way that you can. So um Again, going back to some of those things we talked about a minute ago, uh, what are their pain points? What's important to them? Why are they shopping? All of those things are super important. Um, you know, so again, as we're going through, what do you provide to that ideal client? Some of that could be education. If you're looking at, you know, once you find out who the ideal client is, let's, let's communicate to them 
what you provide. You know, is it education? Is it some sort of resources out there? Is it technology? Obviously, a lot of it's probably going to be technology related if you're an agent tarot. Um, training, time, effort. What is your value add? And so, again, in order to get that phone to ring, I think it really helps to know these things walking into it. So, again, I'm just setting the table, putting the forks and knives out, and then we'll get into some meat and taters in a minute. I am from the South, so we say taters. Um, how do you provide uh, those that you help? How do you do these things? So, we'll get into some of that. You know, whether it's uh, you're thinking, what do you mean by education? He, you know, what are you talking about? You know, you could do policy reviews. Uh, you could do, you know, newsletters, blogs. You could do webinars, seminars. You could do, you know, a, a podcast, driving data, uh, anything like that. Uh, you might be able to uh, do YouTube videos to educate your clients, things like that. Just some ideas and some things that you could jump into um, when it comes from education platform. You know, hopefully some of you guys have thought about something. Maybe you do some of these things. And that's a, a thing that you hear a lot. We'll do a free policy review to get a quote. Um, and some of you guys may do that and it may work great for you. Some of you like to put out newsletters. Um, so if you guys are doing any of these things now, I'd love to hear about it. What resources do you provide? Maybe it's a compliance check. Maybe you do safety trainings. Maybe it's employee handbooks for those commercial clients. A big one that I'm hearing nowadays is property pre-inspections. Because as you guys know, probably some of these carriers are going to come out and do an inspection and they're going to give them like 47,000 things they got to fix before you can get an accurate quote or before you can get this or that. They might say, yeah, you might want to fix this or get this handrail put up or do this or do that. So if you can go out ahead of time and get some of those inspections done before that, I think it's going to help you a lot. So that just may be an idea or a resource that you can provide for your client. Telematics, uh, it's another big one that's come along in the last four or five years. And, um, if you let them know what's going on there, a lot of times people might think, oh, that's big brother. I don't want them knowing anything about that. A lot of times they don't even monitor a lot. They just want to, you know, to collect data. So again, you can get a big discount there. Or if you've got a teenage driver, I think that could help there too. Or if you've got, you just want to keep tracks on some of that. Uh, maybe you're a business owner. You've got some people on the road. Telemax is a big one there too. Um, what technology do you provide? Maybe it's an agency app, a client portal, Maybe it's a website, social media, chat bot, things like that. Again, going back to social media, um, you know, a lot of the carriers, from what I understand, I think it was Adam that I was talking to the other day. And, you know, Clivens can probably back me up on some of this too. Some of the carriers you have can create, if I'm not mistaken, Clivens, can create a uh, customizable link to the agencies out there. They could put that on social media to get quotes. Am I right? Yep, there is um, some of the carriers do consumer links where if you guys are pumping a lot of traffic to your websites, um, they can just click on the box, kind of self quote, get sent yeah. to yourself. Then you can follow up with agents that have clients that have already put all that information for you, and it's just a quick call and kind of closing that sale. Yeah, it's a great thing you can put on social media on your website, any of those types of things. And again, you know, you can even provide that probably to a, a referral partner or something like that, so they could get those quotes out quicker. Again you know, figuring out what you could provide, you know, to your, your client. Cause you know, you know, obviously, you know, companies like, you know, whether it's Geico or progressive or whoever it might be, they're pumping, you know, every day, uh, every time you watch TV, you're seeing a commercial, you know, 15 minutes or less could save you 15% or more, whatever it might be. They're going to quote online. Anyway, you might as well let it be through your portal or be through your website or through your social. So why not try to do some of those things? And again, that's going to start helping that phone ring. What trainings can you provide? Maybe if you're on the commercial, maybe it's OSHA training. Maybe it's ladder safety. Maybe it's safe lifting. Uh, that was a big one that I used to do as an agency owner. Um, we were a lot of contractors and a lot of things like that and restaurants and whatnot. So we had a carrier that gave us a safe lifting app that we could provide to our clients. And they would download this app and it would tell them what was safe to lift and what needed two plus people, what needed four plus people to lift it. And it just helped and the carrier gave them a massive discount or credit for that. So look for things like that you can provide as well. That you can communicate to them. Um, so uh, as you talk more about now that we've gotten some of the table set and whatnot, uh, making that phone ring, um, I think the biggest start to that is because some people will tell me, Heath, I don't want a cold call. I don't like the cold call. So why not work through solid referral resources? Um so I don't know percentage. I would imagine most of the people listening here, um, Clivens, maybe these are mostly personal lines agents, I would imagine. 
So if that's the case, you know, is that the right, Clivens, probably? Yeah, so a good amount of them are personal lines. We do have a couple of commercial. Commercial, okay. Too, so it's good. So to we'll stick right to now. more of the personal lines. So, again, uh, realtors, lenders, uh, bankers, CPAs, um, financial planners, things like that. I don't know anybody out there that doesn't trust their CPA or their financial planner. So if you can get the buy-in from that, if you don't trust your CPA, fire them right now. So I'll just give you a little free piece of advice there. But you, most people do. And so if you can get in with them and get them to trust you and get them to refer you business as they're talking to their clients to say, hey, you know, here's a way that we could do this or here's some of that. Why don't you call, you know, this agency and get a quote there. Um, niche specific, those commercial guys out there that might be listening, niche specific association vendors. I don't know how many of you guys out there are involved in BNI. Um, I, I would love to, to hear from you on that if you can. So BNI is another good option. If you get a good realtor and a good lender in BNI, do y'all know what BNI is? If you don't know, put in the chat what the hell is BNI, and maybe I can answer that. But anybody know what BNI is? I know what it is. You know. Why don't you tell the audience what BNI is? Well, it's a networking group. Yeah. And I forget what BNI stands for. Business. Bi yeah, Business Networking International. Network so yeah. Yeah. It's, but, go ahead. Did you unmute to answer that, or did you? Are you going to tell me to shut I, up? I unmuted to answer that because you awesome. asked me. Awesome. But yes, I knew what it was. So yeah, BNI is a great uh, opportunity because it's a, a bunch of people like you. They're looking for referrals. They're looking for networking opportunities. And so if you can get in one of those groups and find a great realtor that's looking for somebody to send their business to, why not? The same thing with lenders, bankers, all of that. And then you could also work with captives or exclusive agents in your town. Maybe you have a good state farm agent that you know that can't write everything. Maybe they could send you some business. It may sound crazy, but I've, it's worked. Um, and so again, all we're doing is trying to get the phone to ring so you can write more business. And I'm hoping if you can just get one or two nuggets out of this, uh, it's been worth the hour that you came in here. So in order to, you know, to help that phone to ring, build relationships with those referral resources, those referral sources, you know, you can do regular drop buys, um, whether it's monthly, uh, always look to add some sort of value when you show up and, um, you know, do some sort of open and honest communication at all times to let them know what your ideal client looks like. Let them know what you've got going on. Maybe you added a new carrier to Agentero platform. Maybe you're like, oh man, we just added openly. We just added this carrier, that carrier, we just added this or that. We've got a hot new market right now. Let them know what's going on so they'll know, oh, I need to make sure, you know, I, I send Clive into business because he's got a new carrier or he's got this or that going on. And again, you know, maybe you can create that quote link uh, and you can have them send it to the potential client. And then whether you win or lose, what the cool thing is, and I'm going to say this and hope that Clive doesn't, you know, tell me I'm wrong. But once you get that quote, it's forever in your dashboard. It's forever in your system that, you know, because you've already quoted it. And if, even if you lost it, you can go back next year, you know, and say, hey, you know, I quoted you last year. I'd love to write you. So you've got like a lead list built in right there. So um, I, I think that's a great way of building up some of that. So maybe you could send those links out, work with some of those referral partners. Uh, that's the cool thing about Agent Taro is having that opportunities engine, having everything built in right there where you've got a dashboard. And they show you opportunities out there to say, hey, you got their home, but you're on their auto. You got their home and auto, but you don't have the umbrella. Super cool right there that you could be able to have all that at your fingertips. So back to the referral sources. Um, I think there's nothing wrong. A lot of people want to do email drip campaigns to their potential clients or their prospects. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing drip campaigns aimed at referral partners to be able to let them know from time to time new carriers or new discounts or new this or new that, <clears throat> excuse me, or to be able to say, you know, um, you know, we'd love to write some more umbrellas. Could you, uh, I would love to talk to these clients or those clients. Um, same thing with text campaigns. If you've got, you know, a good management system that does that, you can schedule out text campaigns as well. And then another big thing with the referral sources is, you know, everybody likes a good lunch. Um, and so, give them a shout, you know, take them to lunch. I don't care if it's Taco Bell, they'll still be happy. Um, but uh, I may be the only person in the world that likes Taco Bell, but I do. Um, I like Taco Bell too. Golly. It's a guilty um, pleasure. It's, it's so great. Um, maybe it's dog meat, maybe it's not, but it's such good, you know, good food for me. So anyway, whether it's that or whether it's some fancy schmancy place, I think everyone loves a good lunch. And 
what I have found through the years is if you take someone to lunch, they're usually going to feel obligated to do something for you. Like, oh, dang it, Stacy took me to lunch. Now I got to do something nice for her. Let me send her a piece of business. Then once you wow them with how great you're going to be and answering that call and taking care of that, they're going to continue to send you more and more and more. Um, one of the big things, just a little side ninja trick that I will uh, sidebar here since uh, I'm the star of the show. I'm going to take my time here and do this for a second. But I would say when you go to someone for lunch, uh, go somewhere that you're a regular. So they know your face. They know your name. The waiters know you. The waitresses know you. The owner knows you. So you take that referral part and they're like, oh, man, he knows everybody. Or Stacy or so-and-so knows everybody. You know, I used to do that with three or four different restaurants in Little Rock where I live. And the, the chef would come out. It'd be like a whole big dramatic, you know, thing. Like, man, he knows the chef. He knows the owner. He knows this. And it's like, I want to do more business with this guy. He knows everybody. And so it's just a little thing like that. And you may not know anybody else in the whole city, but those people. But it's a little trick to make you look like you have a lot going on and see more important. Stacy unmuted. What's up, baby? Hey, I was going to I was going to add one thing that yeah. one of my agents that I've worked with in the past used to tell me he always frequented frequented. Is that the That's word? Yes. That's it. Um, I can't say it for whatever reason, but he, he would always go to his own client's place of business. Yeah. So if he wrote restaurants, that's where he went. And he made sure that he introduced people to his clients and vice versa. That's because again, that's bringing them business and helping them since they yeah, that's fantastic. are your client. Yeah. Yeah. And usually if you do, and they're happy, if they're happy with you, then they're going to say that to your client sitting there. It's like, oh man. If you're not doing business with Stacy, yet, you should, you know, he's a great, she's a great insurance agent or whatever. She's helped me. In yeah, this if they that. like you, they're going to talk you up, right? Oh, big time. And they're going to make you the star. Oh my gosh, he's helped me so much. And that then reinforces that relationship. A hundred percent. I love that you chimed in on that. I like having people talk back to me. So, um, you know, connect with them on social media. Um, uh, some, usually I like to tell you LinkedIn if they're a business owner, but if they're a, uh, prospect or whatnot. Some people are iffy on this. I don't want them knowing my Facebook stuff and that's fine. But if you have a business page, maybe you do it that way, invite them to other networking events um, and then look to educate as well as learn. So, you know, while you're talking to them, let them know, you know, your referral sources to say, you know, Hey, um, you know, we're doing this or that. Do you understand umbrella? This is why we sell umbrellas. This is why we're so big on you know, 100, 300 limits. This is why we're big on uninsured motorists or whatever. You might be able to talk about, you know, this carry does that educate them as well as asking them, Hey, what's in your pipeline? What's going on? You know, have you had a lot of closings coming up or have you sold a lot of houses this month or what have you got going just to make sure you're understanding them? Is there anything that you can learn from them? So that it doesn't feel like just a one-sided deal there. So um, I, I think there's a lot you can do with building a relationship with the referrals uh, to help that phone to ring. And some people think it's like, I got to get up and pound the pavement. I've got a cold call. Man, that phone can just sit there and ring all day long for building those relationships. Um, what I would say is, you know, going back to the adding value to those referral sources, I would ask them, what can I bring value to you? What can I do? How can I do this for you? Um, and they'll tell you. A lot of times you'll ask them. I'll never forget when I first started back in I don't know, 2003 or four. I'm showing my age here, Stacy, but way back in the day, um, I called on a realtor. I was like, what can I do to help you? How can I provide value to you? And she said, well, I got like 47 signs I got to put out. Um, could you go out and do that for me? So I spent like four days, you know, putting out realtor signs that said this, but that girl from that point on, she was loyal, you know, and anytime, you know, she needed to put out signs or needed to do some sort of marketing campaign or whatever. She knew my team would be there to help. So sometimes be, be, be careful of that because they're going to put you to work. But, um, I understood more how that worked, you know, and putting those signs out. It was crazy. But anyhow, uh, introduce those, introduce them to referral sources for them. So um, that's a lot of thems in there. Hopefully that made sense to you, but you can introduce them to other people that could send them business. Uh, I hope that made sense. Stacy. I'm failing on that one. All right. So co-sponsored events usually do well. I got it. Okay, good. If you got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So co-sponsored events. Um, some of you might be thinking, oh, those never work. Um, that's an old school approach. But man, I'm telling you, um, anything like that is going to at least uh, get some eyeballs and get some things going. Again, uh, whether it's something like this, where you grab a uh, realtor or grab a lender 
and just do a quick webinar for an hour on the importance of this or that, they're going to see value in that. And it's going to cost you an hour of your time. And I promise you'll get something out of it. Um, a networking event, maybe you guys get all of your clients that you invite, you invite all the clients of that realtor and that mortgage broker, and you have them come together for a happy hour. Then you've got, you know, a third of those people are your clients, but then you've got two thirds of the people there that are not. And so you have a whole room full of prospects. Um, I would also say comment, like, and share uh, on uh, their content on social. Um, send relevant articles, maybe you can send them some podcasts. Uh, again, the big thing on adding value is two ears and one mouth, which was a hard lesson for me as a kid. Um, but you just gotta make sure that you're listening, uh, looking for those opportunities to provide that value. Cause if it's all one-sided, they're not gonna send you a daggum thing. Um, the other big one that I see a lot of problems with uh, working referral partners is people don't have a clear message. So if you're like, I don't know what to send you. Well, what do you write? What do you do? What do you want? Um, so again, um, if you could be clear on that, you know, it can be difficult for them if they don't know. So you got to update them from time to time, whether it's at one of those lunches or when you do a regular drop by, just say, hey, you know what? Here's what I'm looking for. Uh, or you might be able to say, hey, last month you sent me that half a million dollar home in whatever. That was a perfect client for me. Thank you so much. I ended up getting their autos. I ended up getting their umbrellas. Let them know so they know, oh, okay. So I'm not going to send them, you know, a million dollar home or a trailer or a this or that because they don't write that. I'm going to send them this. Um, and then I think a huge is educate them on your process. Let them know what it's going to look like for their clients. So and let them know how to send the referral. You know, here's how I prefer it. Click this link, do that. Or I prefer you have them call me or I prefer you email me. However your process works, whatever that looks like. Let them know how that is so they kind of have a clear idea and they're not in the dark of, well, if I send something to Clive, it's going to sit in a dark hole for three days and then I'll get a quote. No, if they know, I'm going to send something to Clive and he's going to get back to me within an hour, get a quote to my prospect within 30 minutes and this, whatever that might be, let them know what that looks like so they can feel comfortable sending you referrals. And that, again, all we're trying to do here on this uh, call is, you know, talk about how to get that phone to ring. That's the biggest problem I hear right now is, we, you know, my phone's ringing, especially coming into the holidays. Nobody wants to buy insurance in the holidays. That's not true. Um, one of the biggest um, dates in insurance is 1-1. So many people buy insurance on 1-1. Uh, but anyhow, uh, ask questions early and often. Um, again, don't be afraid to ask them what their pipeline looks like. Um, what, what do you got going on? Because if you're working with somebody that hasn't sold a home in two years, probably not a good referral partner or if you're working with somebody that's just got a lot going on you know then you want to make sure you service them better and get in front of them better and do what you can to get more out of them and then hold them accountable to that hey um that's awesome you closed on 30 homes i only got to look at four or five of them what's going on here and do it in a way that's not confrontational but in a way that you can kind of hold them accountable and say hey what can i do to improve my process so you send me all 30 of those homes that you closed on um how can you be of service to them? Again, I put in signs in the yard. You might find something else you do for them and then educate through your referral partner. Um, so I, I think that you got to be consistent. Um, and one of my favorite things that uh, my, my wife says, my beautiful and wonderful bride says to our kids is show up and show out. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, you know, I don't care if you're going to the grocery store, or if you're going to a networking meeting, or if you're going to your son's ball game, whatever it might be, show up and show out and make sure that you are, you know, uh, on your best behavior, you're able to show up and look good, you know, say the right things, do the right things. You're impressive everywhere you go. Um, my wife used to, to make funny, my kids hate to go in the grocery store with me because I could sit in the banana aisle for like three hours talking to somebody about insurance, or I could be at a restaurant talking to the waitress or the person at the table next to me for like 45 minutes and I'd get everything I needed to quote their insurance. Like, dad, can you ever just turn it off? I'm like, no, I can't. And so um, I just think if you can make sure you're intentional in everything that you do, uh, it's huge. Um, again, but going back to building that rapport, schedule those one-on-ones with them, whether it's breakfast or a lunch. Uh, again, going back to the place where you're a regular, uh, look for common interest. Um, and then the two ears and one mouth thing. Um, I, I can't ask if you have any questions or whatever, because I can't see you, but 
Um, hopefully I'm talking really fast because I've got what 30 more minutes. So I want to make sure that I get it all out. Um, but if you have any questions, any thoughts, or if you just want me to shut up, then you know, say that in the chat too. Um, but yeah, I, I did have, I had a quick question or a little awesome. bit uh, point of clarification because I think you touched on something that was pretty yeah. instrumental and awesome was really about that referral partner. Um, I'll, I'll give a little bit of my personal experience. I know for me, um, I used to always have some good friends that were CPA or realtors. And obviously I would try to get referrals from them, but I would try to get invites to some of the events that they had with other CPAs, or other loan officers. So I could kind of get into that network organically, not so much force, but from your experience or from things that you heard from other agents, what are some good ways to kind of expand that referral partner source or that referral partner referral partner network? Yeah, that's a great. Uh, that's a good uh, good question and good point because uh, first of all, what you said is a great idea, but also uh, I would say uh, to get involved, like I mentioned earlier, with obviously there's a bunch of civic organizations in your town, yeah. whether it's mm -hmm. Rotary, whether it's Chamber of Commerce, whether it's Kiwanis, Optimist Club you name it, there's probably something out there that you could get a part of. Um, number two, like you said, you know, if you, if you want to get involved with lenders, then I would find out where they're at, you know, where they're spending their time, what associations they're a part of. There was a happy hour every Tuesday at a restaurant in Little Rock for the, I think it was called the young professionals in Little Rock. And it was just uh, realtors. Uh, it was lenders. It was bankers. It was all these young professionals and they would meet and, it was an excuse for them to just drink a few beers and hang out, but it was a great opportunity to build relationships and get in front of them. And then I could show up a day or two later and be like, Hey, great to meet you at such and such happy hour at this restaurant, had a great time, whatever. Um, the other thing I could say is um, join different associations. Uh, there could be a trade. If you're in the commercial thing, maybe it's the, um, I don't know, maybe it's the general contractors association, or maybe it's the, HVAC associate, the plumbers, whatever it might be, and figure out, you know, get to know some of them. Uh, or like we talked about a minute ago, the Realtors Association or the Mortgage Broker Association or whatever it might be, uh, target some of those and uh, just get to know those people, get involved. And then again, show up and show out, be there every time that they have an event going on and add that value, maybe sponsor some of their events. Does that answer your question, Clivens? Yeah, definitely. I just know, uh, I know a lot of agents are always that's like one of the first things they try to do, but they don't ever know where to start. So I think it's always nice kind of hearing uh, other people's perspectives just on different events or different associations. So yeah, that definitely answered my question. Yeah, great. I appreciate that. And I think, you know, that's the quickest and easiest way, in my opinion, to get the phone ring and grow your book of business is with referral partners. Um, because you don't have to do it. You don't have to leave your house. You could end or leave your office. You can end up being like an inside sales guy for real. And like your phone just ringing with opportunities. And you know, all you got to do is just, do it, you know, take care of those people and do what you said you're going to do. And, you know, you could have five referral partners and you could kill it, you know, and do yeah. several hundred thousand a month in new business or whatever that number needs to be for you. Um, and again, you don't have to cold call a single person. Um, I remember in 03, 04, before Google was a big thing, my dad, you know, I was complaining about new business, whatever. My dad threw the phone book right at me. I was like, here's your lead list, go get them. And I was like, holy smoke. So, you know, nowadays it's so much easier. You know, you can work through social media, you can work through referral partners. Um, and so, you know, there's that. In, any other questions, anything in the chat? Uh, I appreciate you, Clivens. Again, going back to, uh, I like to talk to people. Um, I imagine there's no no chat questions. Um, hope that doesn't mean I'm bombing terribly here. People are very quiet today. I hear you. Um, but sorry. No, it's not a big deal. Uh, the next time I come on, they'll know and they'll be ready. But um, I think with social media, I'm going to dive into a little bit of stuff here that I'm a big social media fan. Uh, I know I'm old, but I still know social, uh, actually more old people are on Facebook now than anything else. But anyway, um, you got to have a plan here, content creation plan. You got to talk about your uh, understanding the algorithms. I'm going to dive into some of that in a minute. Building meaningful relationships online and virtually. and um, you know, knowing your audience and meeting them where they are. And then you got to have a way to measure that. So just at high level, uh, I'm not, you know, some of this stuff you might think, oh, this is obvious, but if it's easier for you to write and you're a better writer, then you might consider doing, you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, or maybe even do a blog. Because again, 
if you've got a blog going on, you've got content out there that people may stumble upon when they're Googling certain things. If you're more comfortable being on camera, uh, which, you know, I'm pretty shy, Stacey, but I, I will go on camera from time to time, get in front of Mike, but you might be more comfortable doing YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok. I'm a TikTok fanatic right now. And I can't stop. Like I'll find myself. Follow you on TikTok, by the way. Say what? I follow you on TikTok. Oh, nice. I got to put another video. It's been a while, but I, I'll sit there. Like I'll start like midnight. I'll look at like three hours later. It's like three in the morning. I'm still watching stupid TikTok, but I love them. But again, you've got a captive audience and there's so much white space there at TikTok. Uh, and a lot of people are doing the whole, you know, TikTok taught me thing and they're learning on TikTok. So you can take that platform and do just a quick 30 second video on this or that, or introducing your agency or do funny stuff. The agency, there's a lot of good agencies out there on TikTok. Um, if my contact information gets put out there, reach out to me and I can tell you some of those you can you know, look at. Um, a big thing to understand is the algorithms and some of these, obviously they change from time to time, but uh, you know, they usually social networks prioritize which content a user sees in their feed first by the likelihood they actually wanna see it. So if they've, con if they've reached out to you before, if they've liked your stuff before, then they usually wanna see it again. The algorithms determine which content delivers you uh, based on your behavior. So again, um, they know what's going on. They know what their behaviors are. And so if you know your client, like going back to what I said earlier, if you know their behaviors, if you know what they like and don't like, then you can um, determine, you know, who sees it by, you know, what content you put out there. For example, Facebook or Twitter might put posts from your closest friends and family up front and center because they're the ones you interact with the most often. Um, and then a question for you, have you ever been, you know, recommended videos to watch on YouTube? This is, again, based on your individual behavior, digging into what you've watched in the past and what, you know, users like, uh, like you are watching. So, again, it, it's a lot of that just built in. It's kind of scary sometimes, but, you know, elements such as categories, tags, keywords also factor into recommended content on a given network. So if you can understand some of these things, I think it will help you a lot. We have a house where literally, um, I promise you, Stacey, it's crazy. I've got eight Alexas. Uh, we have one in every room. And we do too. It's crazy. First of all, it's amazing, you know, when you can have certain things. But the other thing is like everything that's said pops up on my Facebook or on my social media. And like, I don't even have to ask my kids for a Christmas list because the damn thing just writes it all down for me and just tells me, you know, it'll just pop up certain things. It's crazy. Um, or, you know, I'll be talking about something. And next thing I know, I got a Facebook ad. So it's crazy. You're on mute. You know what you about to say? Your phone does it too, all the time. Yeah. I'll talk about day. something in my phone or Facebook or something will pop up. It's, it's crazy. very interesting. Yeah. So if you know that, you, you know, try to play into some of that thing. Um, Facebook engages, you know, uh, they use engagement. So again, um, Facebook sees uh, likes, comments, reactions, and either form of engagement are all valuable currency. You know, so if you want that, so here's the biggest mistake, and it's so easy, and people don't think about it. So again, uh, if you already knew this and you're ahead of the game, I see a lot of people don't understand. Why well, don't I get any likes or comments? If you do get one like, you know, or one comment, you know, respond to that comment as quick as possible. If someone says, you know, anything as a comment, make sure you respond to that. Um, if people go out and like your stuff, then go out and like theirs, but make sure that you're engaging with them. Cause if you don't, then what you're telling the algorithm is I don't want anybody to comment on my stuff. So if you look through your last four or five posts and you see that you've got seven or eight comments that have not been responded to go right now after this is over and respond to all those comments. Um, Facebook itself even says that video content drives a higher engagement and pictures and whatnot. So if you're just posting words on your Facebook or your Twitter, or whatever, no picture or no video that goes with it, it's probably going to get just scrolled right past. So if you create some graphic or do something simple just to get them to stop for a minute, uh, it's going to help you a lot. Facebook rewards organic posts. So, um, you know, this is a, a tough one for a lot of people, but if you post stuff that's organic that you wrote yourself or somebody in your agency wrote yourself, um, you're going to get a lot more reaction out of that uh, as, a, as opposed to Stacy put up this great article about uh, umbrellas and you repost that. I mean, it's great for her, but that's not going to do anything for you. Um, 
yeah, other than just, you know, have something to put out there. But if you want to put an organic post out there, uh, or if you want to repost it and then write something up there above it, that's fine too. But article links, they don't necessarily like article links because what they're going to do, that's going to take you off a of Facebook platform and put you on another platform. So Facebook does not like that. So if you're posting article links thinking, oh, I'm putting a lot of value out there, you're not. Um, Facebook penalizes those posts with links. Again, as I just mentioned, um, encourage your team to share content. Again, all we're doing is getting that phone to ring um, and getting comments and engagements and whatnot. Like LinkedIn, I'll go through really quickly. I'm you know, um, trying to pay attention over here. Um, at the top of your feed, you'll see posts by people you engage with the most often and posts by anyone that you allow or you follow or are connected with. So, um, the amount of time that someone spends looking at the content of your post is important. It's called dwell time. So what you want to do is post things that are, that are going to cause people to stop for a minute. So if you're posting two or three sentences on LinkedIn, try to add four or five more or try to put some spaces in there or something to get people to stop for just a few minutes. Again, comments are more important than reactions. So if you see somebody doing stuff, Go through and comment on some stuff from time to time. Or if you've got a client that you want, uh, a prospect that you want to write business with on LinkedIn, go and you know like some of their stuff so you show up on their feed more. And again, short, sustained. One more quick thing, I think, to interject is you yeah, talked dude. about referral sources. And when you're posting, you can also have a kind of a understanding with referral sources. Hey, I'm going to, you know, tag you from time to time and in my yep. posts. I'd love you to comment on it and then vice versa. And then that way you're, you're getting people to see it. Not only are you seeing it yep. on your feed, you'll see it on their feed. And that's great advice. No, that's great yeah. advice. Um, and I think that's another good way of building those, you know, relationships, building that rapport with them. And you're adding value back to them. So again, it's all about adding that value. Um, really quick, I have eight ways to connect and you know keep up with your client. I don't know. It's I guess it's it's in green there. So I apologize. Oops. Um, so anyhow, ask your audience for their opinions. Maybe do some polls, some random questions. Uh, I see a lot of those right now, especially at Christmas time or Thanksgiving. You know, you could post something as simple. It doesn't have to be insurance related. It could be as simple as what's your favorite dish at Thanksgiving. You know and it's not always going to be turkey or it's not always going to be dressing. It might be, you know, something that blows your mind or someone might say something you never thought about. Um, so hey, he, he, I want to ask you a question. What's your Steve. opinion? And I just, I have a personal opinion that's very strong on this topic. And that is um, you, you just mentioned posts that are personal posts yeah. that are entertaining posts that are yeah. fun. They're not yeah. salesy. They're not yeah. about insurance. Right. To me that it, it's so important to not just try to sell, sell, sell to your client base. If you do, they're never going to watch your post. They're never going to, you know, it just gets old. It does. You, you, you have to, to mix in some personal entertain things. Them. Yeah, you have to do that. So um, I, it, it's crazy the way that works. I would say, you know, maybe one out of every three or four should be about insurance. The rest should be personal stuff or polls or questions or because what you're trying to do is build up, you know, some information about them and whatnot. And, um, you know, like I said, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Or, you know, when was your last time you did this? Or, you know, what's on your Christmas list? Or, you know, whatever. And so, and again, you're building up engagement. And when they respond and say, mine's yams, instead of saying, oh, whatever, leave it alone, you could respond back, oh, I love yams. Or yams are yucky or whatever it might be. But you're engaging with them. And you're getting response and you're entertaining them. They're going to want to come to your page. Say, oh, Stacy posts really funny questions. I'm going to get out there. What's her poll this week? Or what's she and got? You want to make on? people smile. You want yep. to make people think about you and, yep. and have, um, you know, a positive interaction with you. You don't always want to be trying to throw something down their throat. Uh, agreed. And say, I'm great. Great. I'm great. Okay. Let and them determine that. Yeah. Here's the other thing that I would say on that, and this is my strong opinion on this. And if you're doing this right now, stop. Um, every time there's a holiday, you don't have to post happy or Merry Christmas or, you know, it's 4th of July. Have you quoted an umbrella with us today? Or it's Halloween. It's spooky not to have car insurance. Call me today. Don't do that. You know, be, be a little more creative. Um, and don't, don't use the holidays as an opportunity just to cram something down their throat. I hate that. Sorry. That is my soapbox.
that one has a pet peeve I can see. Yeah, 100%. So um, show your customers appreciation, use video, give them an inside look. I love a behind the scenes look at the agency. So if you do like something where you take the video, just walk around your office and people working, have them wave at the screen or say something or do a silly TikTok dance or do something on reels or have some fun with it. You know, uh, again, make them smile, make them laugh, make them want to engage. Again, number seven here goes back to what Stacy said. Don't make it all about business. So uh, I didn't type that really fast. It was already there before you said it, Stacey. So uh, I'm with that's you. That's fine. I, I uh, actually did not read ahead. So that's good. There you go. Um, I, you know, it, it goes back to telling stories yeah. and sharing about your agency and, and creating an agency culture where people do have fun and that they want to do fun stuff yes. like that. And so we hope that that's the kind of thing that all agencies do. It, it, it's work, but it should not be all work. It should be your personality coming through your social. Yeah, you want to seem familiar to, to them. People like to buy from who they know, like, and trust. So if you can be that for them, again, going back to the title of this, we're going to make the phone ring. And if you can connect with them on social, you know, I think it's going to help you in so many ways. And they'll look up your number and they'll call you. And they're like, hey, I saw your video, whatever it might be. Some people ask me, how often should you be posting? Here's just a basic guide. Now, Stacy may have a different idea and so may, you know, uh, anybody else on here, but basic for me is 10 times a month on Facebook, 12 times on LinkedIn, 20 times a month on Twitter, 10 to 12 times a month on Instagram, and then at least once a week on YouTube, four times a month. Um, do you hate that, Stacy, or do you agree? Or somewhere in the middle? Um. I, I think that think. that's a good, I think that that's a good start. Yeah. You would say more than I this? Like, I like more than that, but I'm, okay. I'm the first to say that I'm, I'm guilty about getting busy and ignoring my yeah. personal, yeah. like my LinkedIn or my Facebook or what have you, and only focusing on the business stuff. So, you know, you got to give a little leeway, but as much as you could, I would say every other day is a great, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, a, a, a great cadence but again it it doesn't have to be something you know all inspiring it could be you know your thought of the day where you had lunch you enjoyed this restaurant tag the restaurant this was great the food was yep. great i came here you know show people what you're doing share with them that you're at the little league game yep agree the, the, the game ball people will yeah, remember that over anything they will and uh, they'll love it uh, so again it's about building meaningful relationships on social media always respond to comments don't be afraid to slide a DM. Just don't be sleazy about it. You know, I think you can slide in and you can talk to people. Um, you can get, you know, get a private message going, but it doesn't have to be gross um, or weird or salesy. It could just be hey, something. On that topic, I, I, I'm going to interject. I got a sleazy DM this week from LinkedIn uh -oh. and I'll just throw out the do not. Yeah. Never nope. send a message to someone of the opposite sex, telling them that you like their smile and da 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 da, da in LinkedIn, please, people. No. no, don't. LinkedIn <laughs> needs to be kept professional. And then, in addition to that, you just need to you need to offer somebody something before you're you're kind of interacting in that personal way. I completely. I always agree. look at it as like, what can I help somebody else with? If I'm going to DM them, I'm going to say, "Hey, I saw that you you know work with these people. I've got a lot a lot of connections in that area. Can I help you? 100%. Go through my connections. Tell me to make a you know introduction for you. Happy to do it." Agreed. So again, being genuine, put your put others ahead of yourself, and then look to engage with those who want to engage with you. Um, I went through that. Um, those got repeated. Um, Oh, here we go. I want to end with a few prospecting stats um, just because I think they're fascinating. And then we'll have a few minutes for Q&A if, if we can. Um, so 80% of sales require five follow-ups. Uh, so if you're not following up, if you stop after one, you're in that 44% category and you're missing out. 92% give up their four no's. So, you know, continue, you know, go to that fifth one. I think it's going to be huge. It's going to help you in so many ways. I just think that's just fascinating. So if you do get some of the phone to ring and you get some follow, you may have to continue to follow up. Most people, insurance is not as important to them as it is to you. So you may have to follow up. 70% uh, of people making purchasing decisions simply to solve a problem. Um, so 30% make decisions for purchases simply to gain something. Why should they choose you?
Um, and I think the other part of that is, you know, asking yourself what problem or what pain point are you trying to solve? These are the questions you should be focusing on when you're prospecting for new clients. Um, 91% of customers said they would gladly give referrals. So again, why are you not asking for them? And so many people don't ask for the referral. All I'm asking you to do is do so. 11%, you know, said that they were asked for a referral. So again, we're missing the boat. There's a lot of people out there that said they would give it, but we just haven't asked for it. So um, again, ask for that referral. My favorite stat of all time, McDonald's sells over 12 million orders of fries a day. Why? Because they ask, do you want fries with that? So simple, so easy. You're missing out on opportunities just by not asking. So um, I wanted to end with some prospecting stats uh, before we got into questions. Dang, I got like seven minutes left. Um, I talked really fast. So um, I'm going to take a drink of water. If you have anything you want to say, Stacey. I think this was great. Um, Clivens, you have you have anything to add of things that no. you've done and seen in the past because you've been in his shoes? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that was great. I think there was a, a lot of great tidbits on there, especially about adding value and finding different um different things that you can add, not just to prospects, but potential partners. I know a couple of things that I have seen um, that have really helped out with an agent that was doing more. So life insurance, he would give a child safety kit where they would help out. They would give the oh, stats yeah. on, um, on how efficient they need to be with fingerprinting. So you would come in, do all that for the family, and then do a little evaluation on, on some life insurance needs, things of that sort. So I think if you can find what works for you guys, um, you know, your strengths, if you want to be providing value, if you want to go out networking, if you want to go out prospecting, I think knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and kind of leaning on those um, is definitely the best way of moving forward. Yeah. And I think if you're listening, you know, to also, you know, take advantage of the agent tarot system, like the dashboards of the opportunities that all of those things that come along with what we're talking about here can help you in so many ways when they, you know, if you're looking at opportunities out there, you know, you're like, Oh, I need to get a sale or I got to do this. I got to hit this goal. Go into your opportunities and look, you know, say you don't have their umbrella. You don't have their house. You don't have this. So make that phone call. I think it's crazy not to. Um, and then use that to help you to figure out, you know, what cares you're doing what. And I, I think it's super cool to have that right there at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of agents sometimes forget or get overwhelmed that it, it really only takes one thing to kind of catch on fire. I know a lot of agents that got so many referral sources just because they started doing a YouTube channel or just because they started posting a little bit more on LinkedIn or just because they got that one referral partner. So sometimes just doing one thing differently can really catch on and, and make big strides in your business. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, even as little for me uh, with my podcast, which I don't have enough time to focus on a lot of, but you know, the little I do, I started doing TikTok and I put out like eight videos or whatever. And like literally my downloads doubled in one month just because people, I got more access, people saw me more and I was doing dumb TikTok dances or whatever it was. And people thought, oh, this guy seems to, I'm going to listen to his podcast. And so little things like that, like you just said, can go a long way of engaging, making that phone ring. Um, and if there's anything else that, you know, you, if you don't listen to anything else, I would say, work with referral partners and find a way to engage with your customers online. I think that's going to be huge to get the phone to ring. Yeah, yep, agree. Absolutely. And, and if you're doing zoom and you're, and you're talking with your clients, just them at the end of your meeting, Hey, can we take a minute and you tell me about your business because you're already recording, right? Or you could be recording. Say, can you tell me about your business? Do it on a recording. And then I'm going to share that. So that other people know who you are. I mean, that's that. a way that you're helping them. You've already got an audience or you're building an audience. You're helping them to um, expand their business and for people to learn about them. And because at the end of the day, it should not be about you. That's the key takeaway here. It's not about you. It's for your clients and it's for their um, education, their entertainment, you know, information. Make sure that you're focusing on everybody else and choose, like Clyden said, choose one, just start somewhere, choose one thing. Yeah. And if you're not an agent tarot agent watching this, you know, reach out and figure that out. Cause there's so many things that they're 
they're doing as I heard the demo the other day, I was like, holy smokes, you know, I wish I would have known about Agent Tarot when I was a agency owner, even if you're, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, Clivens, but even if you're just wanting to dip your toe in the water with some of these carriers you guys write with, you don't have to take on every appointment that you guys have at Agent Tarot, do you? No, not at all. Yeah, it, it's up to your discrepancy. Some of them they may have elsewhere. Some of them they want to transfer in. But yeah, it's it's up to you what fits your needs, which carriers make sense to kind of move forward with. And yeah, we can definitely tailor uh, different types of panels for your different carriers for sure. Yeah, and like the the model of Agentero to using data to help you grow your business is huge. And data is such a buzzword right now in our industry. And so mm-hmm. for you guys to be at the forefront of that and understanding that and what's going on, I'm super impressed by that. And I'm a fan and always have been. Um, and if all else fails, you know, just get to know Clivens and Stacy and Louis or Luis, the whole team, like just cool people. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much today, Heath, of course. Um, thanks so much for taking your time and for all the information that you continue to share with us and the world um, every week. If you're not already following Heath on LinkedIn or TikTok or any of the other places, please make sure you do because he entertains me all the time. And I really enjoy watching everything that you bring um, to the world. It's it's really refreshing. And, uh, and I learn a lot from you constantly. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I wore your sweatshirt. I know that. Morning. Did you? I wore your hoodie. I should have made you wear it today. I, I wore it this morning. It was sweaty after my workout, but I did wear it. Good. Love it. Get a picture of that sometime for me. I, I got to see it. Um, so I know that, you know, you make a, a difference to agency owners. And I know that you'll make a difference here today for producers, because if they will watch this and kind of just take a few takeaways, um, they're going to be able to make the phone ring for sure. We'll make sure that everybody gets your slides so that they have the notes. And um, again, thank you, Heath. Thanks for joining us. You always bring such insight and experience. And I thank you for sharing your, um, you know, your talents with us today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Terrific. If any of you have any questions, send those out to our team at sales at agentero.com. Thanks again for joining us for this peer-to-peer training. Y'all have a great day. 